we cannot be defeated because we're God's chosen ones. We cannot be defeated because we're God's champions. We cannot be defeated because we're God's chosen ones. We could not be defeated because we're God's champions. We already won. I'm Doc V, and today I want to talk about the Supreme Court ruling that came out today when I was watching the news. It stated that affirmative action for college admissions, universities, and colleges throughout the United States, there's no longer a requirement to put your race down as one of the uh, situations that they examine before they determine if they're going to let you enroll in a college, in a college or a university. Now, where that space says race and you mark black, Indian, Asian, Hispanic, that's eliminated now. Before the ruling, the Supreme Court ruling, universities had to look at the whole pool of students and look at their qualifications, look at their transcripts, look at their SAT, ACT scores, and from there make a decision on who they select. And they were mandated to select a certain number of other races, not just white male, but women, blacks, Hispanics, Asian, and so forth. People are getting upset about that. People are getting, are getting in an uproar about this. They're saying, well, is it more systemic racism and this Jim Crow Jr. is coming back? And I don't want to get off of my plan and my strategy and the path that I'm trying to lead young African-American males to their success. We don't want to get off track. We want to stick with the plan. Stick with the plan. The physiological needs and safety needs are the basis of the pyramids. Then love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization at the top. You are going to run into problems. You're going to run into situations at each level, but you do not want the situations to take you off the pathway. Diversification or affirmative action also takes place in major corporations. Uh, for example, Microsoft, Home Depot, Walmart, Chick-fil-A. They are required that their employee pool represents diversity. Male, females, different races. This is uh, a mandate that is checked upon by the U.S. government. So the question is, why did they mandate this for schools? Why did they say universities and colleges no longer have to adhere to the regulations set forth by the Supreme Court? representing affirmative actions. Some people say, well, it's unfair. They're trying to hold us back. And some people say it's more fair because now you're going to be chosen based on your merits and not have, a, for example, a black person being put in a position who was not as qualified as that white person, but they had to put them in there to meet the affirmative action regulation or mandate. So I can understand it going back, going both ways. I can understand the uh, discomfort, uh, people getting upset, wondering, you know, is this fair? What's going on? But again, I want to get back to my plan, back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and that pyramid. Once the basic physiological and safety needs are met, then one can ascend up the pyramid. One can find companionship, love, support. And after that point, they can start 
finding out what their skills are, what their abilities are, what God-given abilities do you have that you can turn into a money-making venture? Or what can you major in in school that's going to better enhance your natural skills and abilities so that you may be a positive contributor to society? I'm not negating the fact that blacks have come from a unique history, racism. Well, let's go back to slavery. Slavery, we drug over here in slave ships and made to work for nothing. Families broken apart. It was terrible. Jim, then after the Emancipation Proclamation, more blacks were killed then because they were no longer property, but they were competition. They were a threat. So they were killed. Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow statutes put together about where blacks could work, how much money they could be paid, where they could live, and then racism. So black people are coming up from that. And is there still systemic racism? Yes, there is. But there are also laws in place that protect us. There have been some heinous acts recently against black people but the guilty were prosecuted and put in jail, which set an example for anyone else that would want to destroy a race that for no fault of their own, they're in the skin that they're in. And I applaud our country and our government for making decisions when someone was just blatantly wrong to convict them and put them in jail. So that being said, we want to stay on the path and realize that we cannot be defeated because we're God's anointed, blessed, chosen ones. And no matter if you're Republican or if the Democrats take the House or, who's, or whoever's in the judicial, the, in the Supreme Court, whoever's in the Supreme Court, it doesn't matter if God has his hold and has a plan for your life. All things work together for the good for those that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. I believe that's Romans 8, 28. Know what your purpose is. Know what your gifts are. Know what your calling is. And all this other government political stuff that's going on, God will move that out of the way. He'll knock that out of the way and he'll lead you down that path and you will be a success. And remember the stories, the stories in the Bible where it looked like a person was just completely lost. Joseph, when he had the dreams and then his brothers took him and they, and they threw him in a pit, left him for dead, and then he was captured and brought and made a slave, but he became one of the higher uh, representatives and officials in Egypt. Because he believed and followed that dream that God placed in him. I can go story after story after story. Even in your own personal lives, I'm sure you can think of things that have happened to you that if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for the angels watching out for you, you could have been destroyed. Your, your uh, freedom could have been taken from you. You could have been locked up in jail. You could have been maimed for life. You could have been emotionally and mentally destroyed because of a particular relationship or a particular uh, group of people that you were hanging with. You could have been messed up with, with drugs. You could have been just destroyed. But God found a way to bring you through that situation and to the situation where you can excel and you can be blessed. I have stories even about my life where I was, my physiological needs were messed up. Wasn't sure where I was staying, living in the basement, stuff in storage. For food, I said, well, I gotta get meat and I gotta get vegetables and I got to have a place to stay. I remember when I first, uh, when I was in my late 20s, I got out of college and I was expecting 
things were going to be great. I got my degree. Someone's going to hire me. And I was watching TV with them carrying the briefcases. And they're in the high office building. And how many know that uh, that dream was definitely a dream? And that's not how it happened. I started off in a one-bedroom apartment. <clears throat> my bed was a bunch of winter coats on the floor with a sheet on top of it. And a board was my dinner table. And for food, I bought all beef hot dogs, because that's my meat. I bought fresh broccoli and steamed it and put cheese on it because Pat at OU taught me how to make that. And then for my snack, I got cereal, corn flakes, shredded wheats, and milk and juice. That was my meal. And then when things got better, I ordered pizza. I went and, and treated myself to eat. God brought me from a mighty long way. People see me and they're like, Ooh, well, well, that's nothing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm nothing without God. I'm nothing without his grace and mercy and him watching over me and guiding me. Okay, move this way, move this way. I, don't go there, don't go here. He'll bring you through it. It doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court does with college admissions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter but you must make wise decisions. Uh, what, is the, what did the scripture say? Uh, give unto Caesar what is Caesar, what is Caesar's, and give unto God what belongs to God. Your life can be blessed, and it can knock through and bust through any obstacles if you trust the Lord. Remember the pyramid. Physiological needs, stability, that represents stability. Where you're living, where you're eating, where you're sleeping. Do not make unwise decisions with your credit, which we're going to talk about in a future lesson. We're going to talk about credit, protecting your credit, building your credit, and the power that good credit can have on your personal and financial situation. Physiological needs, safety needs, be sure about where you're living, who's around you, make sure you're stable in that area. Then from there, you can build through love and belonging, esteem, and finally, self-actualization. Because no matter what's going on with these battles, with these internal battles within our government, with people of different race, races, with systemic racism, and not only is there systemic racism, there's races that have a problem with other races. I've seen it. There's people who they might come in your face and smile, oh, how are you? You okay? Yes, yeah, nice to see you. And they're like, I wonder uh, what kind of food they eat. I wonder what they do. I see it all the time. I've got friends. I've got some white friends, black friends got some Puerto Rican friends, and after they learn your trust, they start letting you know what talk is going on on the other side. And it's pretty interesting. Racism, it is still here. It is upon us. But stay on the path. Make sure you have a place to live that's safe, and then you build your relationships and you build your goals on that, and you move forward. And remember, we cannot be defeated because we are God's chosen ones and we are his champions. We cannot be defeated because we're God's chosen ones and because we're God's champions. We cannot be defeated. You cannot be defeated. You will make it. You will make it.
I'm Doc V, and I'll see you next time. We can have the victory.